watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. This game on Friday is huge. It's battle of who's going to be probably SEC champions. Our offense is always going to flow. You know me, Carson, you know we're already going to get ours. They're out to get us. We beat them last year. We won the SAC last year. I mean, really, I love I love playing in front of a crowd. We look from a coaching standpoint for perfection. We know that's not going to happen. But you try to get kids to understand to, to reach that goal or trying to get to perfection. And it's always nice when you can hit a three-quarter court shot at the buzzer to win it. So um, if that happens again, we would take that. Oh, yeah, you probably remember it. Last time Snyder played at Homestead, it was Highlight Zone history. The Panthers fans certainly won't forget it. Spartans fans, they, you know, they wish they could. But as you just saw, it was John Barnes rating a three-quarter court shot two years ago for one of the most memorable endings in the 27 years we've had here on the Highlight Zone. Would there be more drama out and about in a boit? The newly appointed Josh Ayan is joining us now with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Josh. Thanks, Glenn. When it comes to offensive firepower, neither of these teams is short on scoring. Homestead, led by Mr. Basketball candidate and Purdue recruit Fletcher Lawyer Snyder, led by the dynamic duo of Carson Jenkins and Aiden Lambert. Those two combining to average over 50 points a game. Snyder at Homestead, it's your highlight zone game of the week. Got some big SAC title implications here. Homestead coming in undefeated in conference play. Snyder is not too far behind at 2-1 and one in the SAC and 7-2 and two overall. First quarter, Kyron Kalpuaki feeds the ball inside and leaping lizards. Grant Leaper throws that down for the jam. Homestead goes ahead 7-4. Snyder, though, getting ready to play. Aiden Lambert will knock down this triple to give Snyder a 17-15 lead towards the end of the quarter. But at the end of the half, Lawyer swings this ball to the perimeter and Grady Swing beats the halftime buzzer. Homestead takes a 40-33 lead after 16 minutes. But that's when Carson Jenkins takes over. He erupts for a 39-point night as Snyder charges back to take a seven-point lead into the final quarter. The lawyer, he does try to get the Spartans back in this game. This little finger roll right here makes it a one-point game, and the Purdue commit wound up finishing with 31 points. Final seconds, though. Snyder needs to hold on for dear life, and Carson Jenkins getting the icing on the cake. Snyder gets their signature win, 74-69. Jenkins and Lambert are now determined to finish the job and be conference champs by the end of the season. Now I feel real good. It's a tough team. Uh, two top teams in the SIC. I'm happy we got the job done. And I just I put a lot of work in. Faith in God. I just went out there doing my thing, just trying to get the win for my team, really. We was down seven and a half. You know, we just had to make sure we didn't like give up because you know that's that's not good. You know, at halftime you giving up. We just had to make sure we locked in and just finished the game strong. It, was, it just shows to prove that we proved that we one of the top teams in Indiana. And that, you know, we just, we're just going to be good the whole year, and it's just something to prove. Next up, Homestead hosts Columbia City on Tuesday and is at Northside next Friday. Well, Snyder, Scott Leo Wednesday, and Concordia on Friday. Glenn, back to you. Okay, thank you, Josh. Speaking of Concordia, the Cadets came in the night tied with Homestead for the lead in the SEC. Cadets hosting a dangerous Southside team first quarter. David Speckhart for three. More on him in just a second. How about Cole Hayward, though? Barry in the three in the other corner, and Concordia up 17-9 after one. Second quarter, South starts to get it going. Omarion Washington to the cup. He lays it in. But, man, David Speckard had one heck of a second quarter. They could not stop him. He splashes here. Then you're going to see the junior do it again from the other side in transition. How about, you know, one more three for Speckard here in the second quarter. Cadets up by five after this triple. And Concordia goes on to win 58 to 41. Concordia now alone atop the SAC standings. With two games postponed tonight, this the third and final boys game played this evening in the SAC. Carroll still looking for win number one of the Ryan Abbott era. Would it come against Lures? Well, Hanson Hafner trying to make it happen. Carroll up by four after his putback. Cadell Wallace nails the three. He had a game by 23, but Lures down early. Cannon Hauser with a bucket. He had a team high 14 and Carroll up by six. A little bit later, it's Hauser again in the lane. Fast forward to the second quarter. You'll see Wallace drill the three and get fouled. 
But it is the first win of the Ryan Abbott era. 66-52 Chargers over the Knights. Girls hooped in the SAC. This had game of the week quality, right? We're talking Homestead and Snyder, both 6-0 in conference play coming into this one. First quarter action, Molly Stock, lock, stock, and barrel. She had 11, Homestead up 7, but Jordan Poole splashes for 3. She had 15, however, Homestead led 36-27 at the half. Third quarter, Jaya Lavette, huge game, 3 of her 26, but Snyder still down. Allie Stevens. She can shoot the basketball left open. She had 20 on the game. And then it's Ayana Patterson. The UConn commit, the spin and in. She had 30 points and 16 boards. And Homestead now firmly in control of the SAC title chase with a 71-66 win over the Panthers. Uh, just relying on our confidence and knowing who we are as Homestead and staying mentally strong in an environment like this and with a crowd like this is our first time playing like this. So I mean relying on each other and uh, having confidence, that's all it is. It's super exciting. It was a super exciting team win. We did what we had to. We worked hard at practice all week to get this win and we couldn't be more proud of ourselves. Couple of hot teams at Charger Fieldhouse. Lewis has won three of its last four. Carroll looking for its third win in a row. Addie Shank with the jumper for Lewis in the fourth quarter. Shank had 12, but Carroll up by 10. Later in the fourth, Maggie Parent, parental advisory explicit putbacks. She gets the bucket there. The lead now down to single digits, but Carroll simply too much, especially on their home court. That was Kayla Gibbs. She had nine. Then you'll see Lexi Castator with a triple of her own as Carroll wins this one by 20 over Lewis, 62 to 42. Northside at Northrop, this is the only game at Northrop tonight as the boys' half of this doubleheader was postponed. Third quarter, Bruins in control. Sanaya Jackson to Amanda Thatcher. Thatcher had 11 points and five assists. Jackson, 13 points, nine rebounds. Northrop in control and looking good. Thatcher feeding. The newcomer, Riley Peppel, for the bucket. Peppel had nine on the game on a balanced scoring attack for the Bruins. You'll see Amanda Thatcher attacking the rim for the two as Northrop takes care of Northside 72 to 21. At Bishop Dwenger, the Wayne Generals looking for their third win in their last four games. The Saints, oh, they're not going to make it easy, are they? Second quarter off the inbound. Sophomore Khalees Collins for two. Later, though, the Saints on the break and running it to perfection. Lexi Linder to Mackenzie Sokol for the bucket. Bishop Dwinger up by six. Late in the second, Sydney Gorman splashes the three, but it wouldn't be enough as Dwinger tops Wayne 58 to 52. Final stop for SAC action tonight. We got Southside at Concordia. Indiana All-Star candidate right there in Eastern Michigan signee Liv Smith leading the Archers south led by five at the half. Third quarter, you know what? Concordia gets one chance, two chances, three chances, four chances to score. They finally do. Samantha Hoffman puts it down. And then more Concordia work in the glass. Annika Nelson, woo Nelly. Concordia up by four. But the end of the third, you'll see Smith Beat the third quarter buzzer. She had 30 on the game. Southside wins 66 to 59 to give Coach Juanita Goodwell her 200th win. Congratulations on that. Well, that does it for the SAC, but coming up after the break, we've got some big games for some of the top ranked teams in the area. In the Northeast State, first place on the line when 3-8 number one Leo heads to Armstrong Arena to take on New Haven. You won't want to miss those highlights in the ACAC tournament. It's semifinal night. That means a trip out to Woodland for a double dip of hoops. And in the NECC tournament, we've got all four semifinal games, including 2A number one ranked Central Noble and 3A number two Garrett in girls. All that and more coming up next on the Highlight Zone. Zone. We New Haven High School, and you're watching the Highlight Zone. Let's go! Well, the math is, is pretty darn simple. As coming into the night, there were only two boys teams left still undefeated in the Northeast State Conference. Uh, those two teams, Leo and New Haven, and those two teams squaring off tonight at Armstrong Arena.
So first place in the conference, obviously on the line. Leo up to number one this week in the 3A state poll. We got the old leather ball matchup and Cademan Bontrager. Oh, he's a force to be reckoned with. He had 35 points and 10 rebounds, but New Haven up by eight in the third. Jakar Williams with the and one. He had 19 points. That would lead the Bulldogs, who are now up by nine. Jackson McGee gets the layup for the Purple Pride. But guess what? Jakar Williams, senior leadership. He gets the bucket there, and then the exclamation point would come from junior Darion Brooks. Williams fires ahead to Brooks, and he slams it home as, yes, New Haven, after a rough start to the season, they take down 3A number one Leo, 69 to 63. You're fired. I mean, it's real big to be the number one team in the state. It's huge for us, and, and it's now it's a, it gives a big chance to win conference and all that. And it gives us a big uh, momentum for the rest of the year. Hey, we just came out. We had our, we had, during the whole week of practice, we came out, had energy. My coach was telling us all week, just energy, 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 and defense and rebound. We knew they had some big, strong guys, so we had to box out and play hard. Staying in the Northeast State, two very, two teams very much still alive in the conference hunt. Uh, right here, we're talking Huntington North at Columbia City. First quarter action, it's Alex Hedrick sinking the three in Columbia City, up by two in the early going. But Huntington North coming the other way, it's Eric Hostler. And that goes in Huntington North now up by one. Second quarter action, not a lot of offense going on in this game, but Cam McCarver off the good feed gets the layup for Huntington North there. You'll see Andrew Hedrick, however, with a layup here for Columbia City, and Columbia City wins a low score against Huntington North, 40 to 34. Turning our attention now to conference tournaments. This the 99th year for the ACAC Boys Tournament. Bluffton at Woodland in the semifinals. Joe Reedy says, ah, I don't need any help, right? Reedy, the senior with the bucket. It's a 20 to 14 Woodland lead. And then Dawson Leakey with the inbound play. And in the score there, 22 to 14. Now Woodland in the lead. Bluffton coming the other way. Tucker Jenkins with the post up and the bucket. But Alex Miller would get the basket here for Woodland as Woodland goes on to win 58 to 43 over Bluffton. Woodland will now face Jay County in the ACAC title game tomorrow at South Adams. Semifinals in the ACAC girls tournament as well. That means 14 to three Woodland hosting Heritage. And in the second quarter, Dakota Brown, the senior with the bucket and Woodland already out to a 19 point lead at 27 to eight. Taylor Knibular. Totally tubular. Canibular with the bucket on the game there. You'll see Lydia Schultz for Heritage. Think about it. Decides to pop it. Good idea. It goes. But simply too much woodland, especially at Elmer Stroutman Gymnasium tonight. Olivia Ballmer dropping the bomb as Woodland wins 58-29. They're going to take on Jay County as well for the ACAC title tomorrow in Bern. NECC tournament semifinals also tonight up in Albion. We're talking to a number one Central Noble, a must-see team hosting a Fremont team that came in 7-2, ranked 13th in the state's 1A poll. Connor Asijan, Mr. Noble County, drains the three, and Central Noble up early. Logan Brace, though, this Fremont team playing some good basketball this season. That was Brace with a reverse layup, and then, well, unfortunately, they don't get back on defense in this one. Logan Guard with the slam, and you thought that was pretty impressive. Watch the passing on this next play. As Sejan to Connor Lemon to Guard, he finishes high. 61-42, Central Noble a winner against Fremont. Other side of that NECC bracket, semifinals in Butler, 2A number six east side coming in undefeated. The Blazers hosting Prairie Heights, and Prairie Heights, your name is Malone. You know you can play. They've had some good Malones over the years. That's Isaiah Malone with the three-pointer and Perry Heights up early, but Gabe Trevino on the home court. He knows what to do with it. He puts it down. East side up by three. Then Nick Snyder, healthy, happy, and he can play. He knocks it down. East side and Coach Ed Bentley really feeling their oats this season. You gotta love it if you're a Blazers fan. Hugh Henderson splashes himself. And Eastside wins 59 to 31. So they're going to get Central Noble at West Noble tomorrow night. Sticking with the NECC tournament, we're talking girls semifinals. 3A number two Garrett taking on 
Prairie Heights. It's Garrett's Morgan Ostrowski down low in the third quarter. Ostrowski 11 points and nine boards on the game. Garrett up by 18. Kaylee Batchelor to Alex Gerben for the uh, bucket. Foot was on the line though, so that's two later in the third. It's Kennedy Kugler down low for a pair, but simply too much Garrett. It's Bailey Kellum with the and one. Kellum had 22. You'll see Natalie Armstrong off the give and go. Garrett a winner 50 to 34. So who will Garrett get in the title game tomorrow? We got Bosco and Angola squaring off in the semifinals. This one played at Central Noble. Start of the third quarter, Angola up 28 to 10. And well, that is a bucket for the Angola Hornets who now lead by 20. Kennedy Vice, Kylie Caswell, and one right there. Angola now up by 21 and starting to put it on. You'll see Caswell again for three as Angola wins 46 to 18 over Busco. We got Angola versus Garrett 530 tomorrow in Ligonier at West Noble for the NACC title. And that's going to do it for right now. But your Peter Franklin Jewelers, Jim of the Night, is coming up next. Jim of the Night is next. You're watching the highlights of. Well, what a week Connor Asijan has had. Not only did he hit 2,000 career points and become Noble County's all-time leading scorer, last Friday the future Wisconsin Badger slammed his way to the Peter Franklin Jewelers Gem of the Night. Now with that, it's time to find a new king of the court, as here is your latest Gem of the Night, courtesy of our good friends at Peter Franklin. And the honor, oh, it goes to Jakar Williams, tossing it up to Darion Brooks for the slam. Brooks hammering it home. He had 13 as New Haven beats 3-8 number one Leo. Yeah, pretty impressive victory. And then on the ladies' side, how about Olivia Smith? Liv just dropping it and walking off. Third quarter buzzer beater. Liv had 30 in a south side win that helped Juanita Goodwell, the head coach of the Archers, win her 200th game. Congratulations to Liv and Mr. Brooks. That is your Peter Franklin Jewelers, Gem of the Night boys and girls. As for next week's games, we got SAC doubleheaders again. That includes Homestead at Northside. Of course, Northside boys did not play tonight. Concordia is at Snyder times two. Also a huge matchup in Butler as Central Noble takes on 2A number six east side. That will be a rematch of tomorrow's NECC championship game. So perhaps we'll get a precursor of what we're going to see next Friday night tomorrow with Josh A and he'll have coverage of that. And also in girls action only next week, Columbia City hosts the Calvis Columbia City hoping to march to an NEA title while Garrett is at home against West Noble. All that and much more next Friday night right here on the Highlight Zone. Well, after a loss on a fluke goal Wednesday night up in Kalamazoo with the hockey gods grant the Comets a win on Friday is the case. We're hosting the Indy Fuel and second period Anthony Petrozelli, the cap and making it happen with his 11th of the season. But Kalamazoo still up 3-1. Third period Sean Sidlowski with a power play goal to make it 3-2. But Indy would add an empty netter late in the third as the Comets fall by a final of 4-2. Comets on the road tomorrow when they travel to rival Toledo. College Hoops on a Friday. Uh, Tuesday's game against the University of Michigan was postponed, so Purdue well rested for a date with Nebraska, and man, Purdue looked good. The big guy's too much for Nebraska to handle. That was Zach Eady. He had 22. Then off the miss, Jaden Ivey just flushing one home. Ivey had 17 on the game. Purdue up 15 at the half. It got worse for Nebraska in the second half. Blackhawk Christian Grad, Caleb first. He had 10 points on the game as Purdue rolls at Mackey Arena against the Huskers 92 to 65. Next up, Purdue is at Illinois on Monday. Final stop tonight, home opener for the men's volleyball team at Purdue Fort Wayne. The Volley Dons hosting Maryville University. That's in the second set. Carlos Mercado with the kill. He had four of those on the night. And then Bryce Walker dealing up aces. He had two of those on the night. And well, PFW after winning the first set 25-21, looking good. John Diedrich with a match high 15 kills. Then you're going to see Bryce Walker with a great defense. Good block there at the net. 
as Purdue Fort Wayne wins its home opener. They sweep Maryville by a final of three. Well, that is going to do it for this week's edition of the Highlight Zone. Good to have my man Josh Ayan here on the Highlight Zone for the first time. You'll see plenty more of him as the high school basketball season rolls on. But for Josh, I'm Glenn, and we'll see you next Friday right here on Fort Wayne's number one sports show.